Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Bible webinar entitled The Seal of God and the Passover. My name is Yerdel. And I'm Aliyah. And we'll be your host for today. Aliyah, can you believe it's been a year since the pandemic started? No, I can't believe it's already been a year since we saw our classmates on campus. Nowadays, because of the pandemic, in-class attendance is either not allowed or heavily restricted. I missed when we used to be able to go to campus and participate in the activities the school would host. Now, the school still hosts the activities, but they're all virtual. So even though we are gathering together, it still feels isolating. Yeah, I agree. I really hope this will all end soon, though. Well, now there's a vaccine. However, soon after the vaccine came out, mutant strains of the virus were found. The World Health Organization published an interview with their chief scientist, Dr. Samia Swaminathan, who said, Scientists have now studied this and have found that these variants do tend to spread faster. They're more transmissible or more infectious. So that's the worrying part. Right. Not only the pandemic, but there's been so many other tragedies happening around the world. According to BBC, a massive explosion in Beirut, Lebanon, claimed the lives of about 200 people and injured 5,000 others after a warehouse storing over 2,000 tons of ammonium nitrate was accidentally detonated. There's been conflicts like this happening all around the world. And on top of all of this, climate change is still going on. There were hurricanes, wildfires, record-breaking heat, and even in this year, a lot of places were hit with extreme winter weather. The aftermath of climate change has misplaced about 20 million people per year over the past decade, according to the World Economic Forum. Yeah, and with all these things happening, I'm sure many people are feeling anxious. The U.S. Census Bureau reports that 42% of adults felt symptoms of anxiety or depression in December of 2020. That's up 11% between January and June of 2019. The American Psychological Association reported in December of 2020 that CEOs from 14 top mental health organizations came together to prioritize their response to this mental health crisis. Yeah, there are a lot of people feeling anxious. Disasters are happening all around the world, so people feel like they have no control. So then, Yerdell, how can we protect ourselves from these things? Well, the Bible explains that these types of things would begin to occur. And the Bible also explains how we can protect ourselves spiritually. So let's start looking into it. Let's read Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. In this verse, we can see that God holds back the four winds which harm the land, the sea, and the trees until his people receive the seal. In the Bible, the word wind means war. In Revelation, the angel holding the seal said that the four winds should not be released until they put the seal of God on God's people. That means that those who have the seal of God, they are the ones that can escape disasters. We can see the same prophecy in another verse of the Bible. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 4, it says, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter the old men, the young men and women, the mothers and children. But do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. Then the important part we want to focus on is who are the ones that are being protected from the disaster. In Revelation chapter 7, it said the seal of God. But in Ezekiel chapter 9, it's being called the mark. So God is promising anyone who has the mark, the seal of God, will be protected from the disaster even if it comes near them. Then you're dull. What is the mark, the seal of God? Well, we can understand about the seal of God through the history of the Exodus. The Israelites were oppressed as slaves in Egypt, but God promised to set them free. God sent 10 plagues to make Pharaoh inclined to let the Israelites go. The last plague was the killing of the firstborn in every household. Before the destruction came, God showed his people how to be protected. 
Let's see in Exodus chapter 12. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I and the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. God promised that anyone who kept the Passover would escape the plague, saying, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Passover literally means disasters pass over. Not only in the time of Exodus, but God promised to protect his people who kept the Passover. That's why God made the Passover a feast to be kept forever. Let's read verse 14. This is the day you are to commemorate it. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. God commanded his people to celebrate the Passover year after year because God always wanted to protect his people from the disasters. This means the Passover remains the way to be protected from disasters far beyond the time of the Exodus. We can see an example of this in the time of King Hezekiah, King of Judah, 800 years later. During his time, the nation of Israel was divided into two, North Israel and South Judah. Eventually, the people had forgotten about the importance of the Passover and hadn't kept it in a very long time. But King Hezekiah wanted to secure his nation's stability under God's blessing and decided to listen to the advice of the prophet Isaiah and keep the Passover with all of those in South Judah and inviting those in North Israel as well. We can see this happening in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 1. Hezekiah sent word to all Israel and Judah and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh inviting them to come to the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. Then even though King Hezekiah invited all of those living in North Israel to keep the Passover, we can see they didn't think it was necessary when we read in verse 10. The couriers went from town to town in Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun, but people scorned and ridiculed them. Ephraim and Manasseh are towns located in North Israel. This means those in North Israel decided to not keep the Passover. So it was only those under King Hezekiah in South Judah that did keep it. Sometime later, Assyria attacked both North Israel and South Judah. But the outcomes were drastically different between the two nations. First, let's see what happened when Assyria attacked North Israel in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 9. In King Hezekiah's fourth year, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, marched against Samaria and laid siege to it. At the end of the three years, the Assyrians took it. So Samaria was captured in Hezekiah's sixth year. The verse says that the Assyrians captured Samaria. Samaria was the capital of North Israel. This means that North Israel was captured and destroyed. But why was North Israel captured and destroyed? Let's read verse 12. This happened because they had not obeyed the Lord their God, but had violated his covenant, all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. They neither listened to the commands nor carried them out. North Israel was destroyed because the people had violated God's covenant, the Passover. Once Assyria captured North Israel, they started to make their way towards South Judah, the nation that kept the Passover. But God promised to protect Judah. Let's read 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 32. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, he will return. He will not enter the city, declares the Lord. I will defend the city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. That night, the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. God assures that the king of Assyria would neither enter Jerusalem or shoot an arrow there. God made a promise saying, I will defend the city and save it. So South Judah was saved from the disaster because they kept the Passover. Yeah, we can see historical records testifying to this. Josephus, a Jewish historian, wrote about how the Assyrians tried to attack South Judah, but then retreated in his book, The Antiquities of the Jews. It's written, He found his army under Rabshakeh, his general in danger by a plague, 
for God had sent a pestilential distemper upon his army. So the king was in a great dread and in a terrible agony at this calamity. And being in great fear for his whole army, he fled with the rest of his forces to his own kingdom and to his city, Nineveh. Then unlike North Israel, South Judah kept the Passover that God commanded them to keep. This is why even though the Assyrians tried to attack them, they were protected. This shows us that God will always keep his promise to protect those that keep the Passover, meaning the Passover is the seal of God. Right. That's why Jesus commanded us to keep the Passover, emphasizing that he eagerly wanted us to keep it. Let's see in Luke chapter 22, verse 8. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. And then in verse 15, it says, and he, Jesus, said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Then, Yerdel, how can we keep the Passover? Let's see how Jesus kept the Passover with his disciples in Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The night before his crucifixion, Jesus established the new covenant Passover, celebrating it with his disciples. At the Passover supper, Jesus gave bread symbolizing his body and wine symbolizing his blood. This is important because he said that God's seal was placed on him. And through the new covenant Passover, we become one with Jesus. John chapter 6 verse 27 says, For on him, Jesus, God the Father, has placed his seal of approval. Again, through the Passover, we become one with Jesus who has God's seal. This means that the Passover gives us the seal of God and protects us from disasters. Wow, I never realized how important the Passover is. It's not just a tradition, but it's God's promise and sign of salvation for His people. Many of you may have never heard about this before, and that's why we are hosting these worldwide webinars. Nowadays, a lot of us are focusing on self-care because we're all experiencing a stressful time. However, we should also focus on taking care of our spirit by studying the Bible so we can receive salvation. Exactly. As the Passover is coming soon, we would love to invite you to continue to study with us. I hope everyone had a good time today. Please stay safe, take care, and we'll see you at the next webinar. Bye! Bye.